Today we're going to be talking about the five things that you should be doing to teach yourself how to code. Not ten, but five. Just five. And you can do them. You can do them today. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. I got nothing for the beginning of this video. Just do these five things. You'll be better off to teach yourself how to code. These are all things that you can start today and continue on. And they're all things that if you want to be a good developer and not just a developer, that you should implement into your lifestyle, into your day, into your work, all these sorts of things. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So this should be a gimme, but I assume too many things are gimme for peoples and you should not ever assume anything anymore in life. So here we are. Code daily is number one. <laughs> I'm not, and I mean that. And you're like, oh, you just mean to code. No, no, I, I truly do mean, please code every day. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that you're actually writing code, but do something that's related to you learning to code. That's really what it is at the end of the day. And although when you're just getting started, yes, you should be actually writing code every day. And it's unfortunate because to me, it's one of the, the few things that I think a lot of people don't do and it always hurts them. And what, what I want to say is that when you're just starting out uh, to co learning to code is one of those things that has a momentum to it. And you need to fully immerse your life and self into it, especially in the beginning stages before, because that is the crucial part where you're now putting it all together. So please, please, please code daily. And I, I, I just don't know what else to say. You, I'm not, this isn't advice that only I've been giving, you know, we had, oh, if you go and look up engineer truth's video, when he interviewed Quincy Larson, code daily code day, almost anybody will tell you, this is something that you're going to have to do. And that's why boot camps have you coding for so much in a three month period. And you come out with developers who are most, most of them can code. Uh, I, I encourage you to do, if, if anything from this list, please just do that. If you're trying to learn to go, <laughs> um, number two is build things. This may sound silly. This may sound crazy, but I know when I started uh, to learn web development, I never actually built anything. I just did. I just followed tutorials on the internet. I just fall on YouTube, for instance. I just did Codecademy tutorials. I just did free CodeCamp tutorials. And it wasn't until I actually built some projects through free CodeCamp, it all started to click. It. I, I'm a big believer in in to in building things and which is why I'm structuring the courses I'm building to just be projects where you're building projects and you're having to put the logic together and see how you're actually using it right part of the reason that I, I hated school was it's all theoretical you never actually got to build anything you never actually got to touch anything and for me I learn hands-on and uh, that means this hand needs to be on this mouse and this hand needs to be on this keyboard and I need to actually be doing something for me to be learning how to code. And I think a lot of people are like that. So build things. And it, it could be small projects. That's really all I'm saying is you don't need to start today building out the next Facebook or Google or whatever bullshit people want to say, right? What you can do is just build a calculator and not follow a tutorial. Just figure out how to build a calculator. And then when you do that, build a slightly more complicated project. Build something that requires an API. Say you're interested in Instagram and you just want to have your Instagram photos on your on your portfolio page. So you don't have a portfolio. Build a portfolio. All just whatever you want to build, just go and build it. Stop watching these tutorials being built and not that they're bad. Uh, I, I, they're great, but oftentimes people never actually build anything on their own. So please build your own projects is, is number two. Uh, number three is a long-term side project. This, this is something I will mention in a hundred videos and 99 out of a hundred people won't do it, but I'm still going to mention it. Please, please, please start a side project of some type. It could be a social aspect one, like my YouTube channel. It could be a blog. It could be a 
uh, you know, I have 29, I have a video where it says 29 side project ideas. I have a whole list there, but start a side project. Start something that's going to keep you interested. Start something that maybe you can make a few bucks from. You know, it's always easy to learn something when it's returning you money at the end of the day. So you're going to go back and do it, even if it's just a little bit. Um, <coughs> so please start a side project. And it could be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be hard coding all the time. Um, but it is something that I think, and it, it doesn't necessarily, if you, if you start one and you, you know, three, six months in, you find out it's not for you, that's okay. Start a different side project. I encourage everyone to have at least one side project that they're working on for their entire career, really. And it's one of the ways that you can keep the passion alive. Just start a side project, please. And it's great for your portfolio as well. Number four is courses, video courses. We've mentioned them a couple times so far, and people are always asking what is the best way to learn to code, and oftentimes it is to build your own projects, but in order to build those projects, you have to know that certain things exist, right? You have to know like, okay, well, one question that I got from my girlfriend when I was trying to teach her how to code is, what am I going to use a for loop for? That seems dumb. So instead of explaining to her what, like what a for loop is, let's just show her an example of how we would use a for loop. And that's the great thing about courses is you, you not only get introduced to concepts, but oftentimes they have projects in it. So you're seeing uh, examples of how you will build something out piece by piece, how all the parts relate and go on from there. A uh, video course, and people always ask like, oh, courses or books. I will tell you that in my personal opinion that I think courses beat books out tenfold. That's my personal opinion. Part of that is that web development specifically is changing very rapidly and it's just hard to keep up. I think you can get 10 pages worth of blogs and compare it with 200 pages in a book and the 10 pages in the blogs will blow it out the water because it's going to be relevant, it's going to be up to date, and it's going to have great content. And I feel kind of the same way about video courses um, in comparison to books. Not that books are bad. Uh, and I don't think anyone think I'm like shitting on books. There's a lot of great books out there on software becoming, you know, John has a, a couple, John Sonmez has some great books that will help you in your software career, but they're not necessarily hard code books. If you're talking about how to learn Angular, how to learn Java, books are a little bit of a strange way to go about it in my personal opinion. Some people will disagree, but I think in terms of time spent for return on that time spent, the courses are much better uh, for that. But that's, that's probably a, a separate video topic. Now, um, number five, uh, I have a, like five things written down for number five, but what I'm really trying to say is immerse yourself into the community. Start hanging out with other developers. Start meeting other developers. Get involved socially. If you want to become something, oftentimes you need to surround yourself with that something, right? If you want to become a developer, it helps to have friends who are developers, who are interested and passionate about the same thing, who when you're struggling on something silly, or you know whatever it is that you can reach out and say you know what man i don't understand what an api is i know it's probably not that complicated i know that i'll up hit it eventually but i've i've been hit it i've been hitting it 10 for 10 hours now i just don't understand what it do this is by the way this is something that's happened to me and an old co-worker of mine ethan I was sending some emails back, asked him, he showed me in 30 seconds what an API is, what I'm doing, and then bam, things start clicking, right? When someone, it's not that the concept is hard, it's just sometimes you don't even know where to begin. And also it goes back to that passion. When you start going in meetups and you become part of the community and you start uh, sharing these passions on, on Facebook groups and you start getting, uh, not only does it help you stay up to date on the field, and let you know what are some great resources to, uh, recommended by other developers. It's just another great thing that will help you stay passionate and help you do these other things we have in the list. It's gonna when you when you are enjoying this and you're you're passionate about it, you're going to code daily. You're gonna go start a side project. Uh, you're gonna build things. You're gonna do courses, right? And so it kind of ties it. It's the glue that ties your learning process all all together. And helps you enjoy what you're doing right if you don't enjoy learning to code you're probably going to not learn how to code and it's going to be miserable even if you do so please try 
to jump into the community and however whatever is fun for you really just fun and makes it enjoyable so that you enjoy all this and youtube for me is my my way that i do it right um i i go to meetups when i can and hackathons and and you know i i get interested in a bunch of a million different things but for me my number one thing that i like is youtube i have the facebook group and the social i like the social aspects and i think that you once you get to and a lot of people are like well i don't know how to meet developers and i don't know where to meet them and you know there's meetups and all that sort of stuff but at the end of the day if you're the one developer in a city of one you have the internet with facebook groups and youtube channels and everything else that's out there to help you get that glue to tie it all together and stick it together so these are my five tips to make sure that you can learn to code effectively and I hope that I actually haven't said anything that you weren't aware of, but I hope maybe you having someone tell you these things that are true. Um, these aren't opinions at this point. This is actually just truth. And there's probably other truths on how to learn to code, but these are probably on everybody's list. In my opinion, I wanted to make them very broad for that reason. And all of these things you can get started on today on a side note. Look forward to the five things that you're doing that is teaching you uh, not to code <laughs> in, a, in, a, in the following day's video. Uh, and uh, that's going to be a fun one. So look forward to that. Uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Support me on Patreon and all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey, baby, what's uh, one way you think someone could learn to code? I don't know. You're the developer. You're always helpful, baby. Quick shout out to deviceplus.com. If you're interested in the latest IOTs, hacks, do-it-yourself projects revolving around Arduino and Raspberry Pi, they have some great how-to guides. I, I highly encourage you to check them out, and thanks for watching.